Okay, so I've got a couple of things I want to do here. This is the um, outfeed table that I'm going to be removing. I'm not going to be using this, so I'm going to use this as kind of my test panel. Um, you can see here it's pretty scratched up, but also the main side table that the rip fence attaches to uh, is right here, and you can see how hammered it is. Uh, this saw, mind you, it was less than a year old when I bought it. And uh, this particular saw has been uh, just hammered. I mean, the finish on this has just been destroyed. So the best thing is for me to uh, repaint this. And instead of um, building an entirely new uh, top, which is what I really want to do, uh, I'm going to go ahead and um, paint this. You could see they obviously had the setup completely wrong when they uh, mounted this guy. Uh, it was set up too high and it was grabbing on the uh, rip fence. So you can see right here, this high spot right there, it was just grounded away. That's just not very good. Um, when you set these up, they need to be level and in the right plane, otherwise you get wear marks like that. So um, now with the uh, rip fence here, it's fine as far as the finish goes, but when I paint everything, I might just go ahead and paint this whole thing as well. I mean, the main body, obviously, I'm not touching that. I'm just talking about these these peripheral things. Um, I wasn't thinking about maybe even doing like a, a different color, but I think I've, I've, um, I'm resigned to the fact that I'm going to keep the main color here. I just don't like scuffs and scratches. This, you know, especially a new machine, I would prefer it to not have them. I mean, I'm sure you can see why I don't want to have this on my saw. A big, beautiful, expensive saw. These shops, they just don't care about their stuff. So this color doesn't have a gloss coat. It's a, it's a, um, it's a matte finish. So I think I'm going to have to follow it up with a clear coat, maybe, because everything else is shiny yeah. but this thing probably could use um, bondo <laughs> my god well if it's too if it's too tough um, at the end of the day I might just say forget about it um, I might just go that extra mile and do like some full sanding but that's a pretty significant there's a lot of scratches on this thing. You can see what I'm talking about. Okay, well, wish me luck. I'm going to go ahead and put you out. Hopefully you don't get covered with paint overspray. All right, instructions call for several light coats within one minute of each other. Wow, that was it. Uh, I have just a little bit left in the other can, but that's basically it. Okay, we'll let this cook out here. I went ahead and put four coats on this as well, and the parts you see masked are the parts that I didn't want to take off or couldn't remove. Now you guys remember this uh, Craigslist tool haul um, 
dust cover that I had got, Blade Guard, and um, a while back. This has been sitting in my trailer, uh, and I've been waiting to um, install this on a slider that I bought. Now I'm going to go ahead and mask out the uh, Excalibur sticker and um, take all the parts off of this guy. And I'm going to repaint it. And um, I don't know what color, <laughs> but it's going to be repainted. So the first thing is I got to take all the parts off. All right, this guy is ready to go. Um, I went ahead and took this apart, just this part, so I could uh, get the uh, label masked up. And so I carefully put some blue masking tape on this guy. If ever you want something really, really sharp, you just use one of these and then just carefully go around the perimeter. I can feel where it's at. I'm pressing down hard to give me an outline. label has a little bit of a munch right there. Nothing I can do about it. All right. That looks good. I just went ahead and just changed it just slightly to come in. So, all right. Um, this is one of those uh, very tedious jobs. It's very easy, but it just takes a little bit of time and patience. And as I go through it, I note the different washers that are connecting things and such so that I put it back together correctly. This thing just slides down. That's pretty tight. I might have to um, do something about that. Once I paint this, it might be a little too thick. Well, that was fairly annoying, but I knew it would be. Um, there's a lot of parts to that dust cover. Okay, take this and um, clean it up really well and get ready to paint it. All right, I go ahead and uh, put the um, extension wing on and it's going well until I get to this point when I realize Bolt's not long enough to level this thing out. So I'm going to have to put a spacer block underneath temporarily just to like give it some height. Okay, it's extremely important that this be flush to the front with the cast iron. So I use the level to make sure it's flush and then flush to the cast iron top. With the table flushed up, I'm going to go ahead and use this piece of paper to determine if it's actually flush or not. If it's tight all the way, then I know it's good. This looks really good. Okay, after the top is put on, the next step is to put your scale on. And you put this on a little bit loosely uh, because you're gonna wanna be able to adjust this later on. And of course, the rip fence bar goes on. And this, you really need to focus on the washers that the factory put in there. Since I didn't buy this new, I just went ahead and left it where they were. Okay, I just set the top on and you know what? I realized I did not like the white paint, so I decided to change it. <laughs> and the match wasn't perfect to that, so I decided to scrap it all together and um, repaint it. Of course, why not? Um, so I chose to go with a a totally different color and that is gunmetal gray. To be honest with you, I'm not a huge fan of steel um, tables like this. However, it's very strong and it needs to be in order to handle the um, weight of this. 
So ultimately, I guess it's probably okay to have it this way. Um, I did not put a clear coat on this. It's just a satin finish, metallic um, gunmetal gray. But the problem is, is that I know this is going to get beat to heck. And my thought is that when it does get beat to heck, uh, what I'm going to do is um, scrap it all together and just put a, um, a veneer over the top of it. It's pretty cool. I'm pretty happy. I also painted the um, the sliding part, you know, the big uh, material support part. That's also the same color, so gunmetal gray. This could be polished. Um, this could be shinier, and I don't want it to rust. So this is a disaster of a shop right now, and it's uh, driving me bonkers, especially considering I've got so much work I have to be doing. This is the last thing I want to be doing is doing you know working on this but i have to get it done okay well to to hold this while i'm painting it i'm actually utilizing the umbrella uh, stand i'm using the umbrella to shield the um, the sun as well as the leaves from the painted finish but um, this stand will work perfectly with the um, piece of metal there and as you can see it sits in there nicely but it also allows me to swivel it while i'm painting to help me get um, even coverage all around. Pretty cool. The one nice thing about having it raised up like this is that I'll be able to get access to the bottom and spray the bottom so it's completely covered. And um, I want to make sure I lightly sand it and clean it with alcohol first. Okay, this is a um, <laughs> th this is one of those things where it, it's pretty easy to paint, um, certainly, but. Uh, there's been some changes, obviously. So this one started out with the paint, and then I um, finished up with a clear coat, but I actually went with a satin coat, a clear coat, instead of a, uh, a gloss, and I ended up changing this down the road. However, I did put several coats of uh, color and clear on this right after I painted the color. Pyramids, little painting pyramids, they work really well, as you can see, especially for things like this. So I just sprayed one side, rotated it, and then I sprayed the perimeter and then the top. And then these I just created a little, you know, basically those guys are just sitting up there and they're just barely above, locked onto the threads there. Now to paint this with the clear finish on afterwards, it's best to just Paint it, and then immediately after, clear coat it. Do not let the paint dry. Just clear coat it right after you paint it. All right, trying to keep these guys from falling over is a uh, task. You can see that guy right there. And then this one here looks pretty good. These aren't the easiest things to paint, you know what I mean? But I think it's going to be cool when it's done. Okay. I um, completely repainted that. I mean, that thing looks brand new. Look at that. Um, it's seriously, that's nice. Um, and that's just, you know, satin. Um, I went with satin. It looks really good. Um, this is a one-time deal, right? Hopefully it holds up. Okay, I want to go ahead and mark out the location for the dust guard. I do want to make sure they're equal on both sides. So I'm making sure with the tape measure. doesn't look so good so I'm am restoring this tool I want to make sure this is really nice rather than buying another one I just polish it and the way I do it is I take some um, polishing um, paste like this <clears throat> and I use my ball here now of course you could do uh, many different things with this you could if you have a buffing wheel on a big grinder that would work also but this works great so you can see how nice that is threads up here so this is where it's going to be seen that's gorgeous nice 
It's like a chrome finish. The other one, I already did this one. This was really bad too. Uh, looked just like this one where it was just dull and this looks really great. So these are gonna look nice. This is brand new now. God, it looks so, it looks like silver. That's really cool. Oh my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> a little different, huh? Than what it was? Yeah. That is impressive. This just looks bad to me. I don't know. Maybe that's just me, but I think this should be shinier than that. that's nice and shiny and and smooth now I mean looks great um, this is the uh, original plexiglass and you can see it's pretty hammered now I'm sure I could do some work on this with some sandpaper and maybe get some of these um, lighter scratches out but there's some pretty heavy gouges in here um, you can certainly see that and you know I'm not gonna get that out so um, I decided to take my chances and um, use these as templates and just make new um, parts. So I bought some plexiglass and that's cool. So I'm going to go ahead and um, use them as templates and then drill the holes uh, with everything attached. So these are identical. So I'll just make two more and then um, this part here. But this, These things are great because... Um, what I like about them is that they're clear. A lot of uh, guards, believe it or not, they're actually covered and you can't really see the blade. I love these ones. Like the one that the saw comes with goes up on the riving knife and it's covered. It's, uh, there's not, uh, it's not clear, so you can't see through it. These were all badly um, faded and you know, pretty much corroded. So I polished these with my um, metal polish and my buffing uh, attachment for my drill. Um, that's really cool. These things are so shiny, they're like chrome now. The nuts too. So I went ahead and did all these, just everything. They look really great. These ones as well. Um, that's gonna look great. Did all the, like this thing here. Look how nice that is. So this is my buffing uh, wheel. This is my little area. I just kind of make it, you know, a, a makeshift uh, buffing area. It's kind of nice because it can confines the um, spin out. You know, whenever you use this stuff, you, you're going to get some, uh, you know, fling. But, you know, as much as I can capture that. But look at this wheel. That's all the nastiness that comes off the, um, the, the chrome or the metal, whatever it is. Um, whether it's aluminum, steel. It's just nasty. I just went ahead and took some WD-40 and just kind of polished it up. But then I also took um, my polishing um, compound and just worked on it. I, I've got to get something that's in the back there. I want to get it out of here and I want to get the, the table saw out too. I've got someone coming to buy the radial saw uh, later this afternoon. So I need to move basically a lot of stuff away um, and also need to you know, put some stuff away. So <laughs> it's, it's like a, uh, uh, you know, you, you make a mess to get at something and then you have to clean that mess up. So it's just, you know, one step forward, two steps back, you know, I am going to sell this guy. Um, I'm not sure if I want to keep the joint tech stuff or sell it with it. Um, but I'm definitely going to sell it. This took up a lot of room back there. And um, I've, I've come to the conclusion that I'm going to put the general in the trailer. I'm going to take um, the big bandsaw and the 16-inch um, bandsaw and fit them in here some way. I'm going to dedicate these shapers to some door applications. Um, I, I want to keep that 
14 inch bandsaw because I think, you know, my son and I love it and we love to just, you know, we could do stuff on, on it like this and not even care right about it. It's, it's just a really good bandsaw for what it is. That's the thing. I also, I don't use the 15 inch planer anymore. I used to use it a lot for, for every job. Um, but I just don't use it much anymore and I don't use it at all. I mean, it's been years since I've used it. All right. Um, well, as you can see, I've got my work cut out for me and, uh, but we'll get it.